because it didn't feel like home. Okay, let's uh, we want to spend more time really practicing these ideas of um, functions and rate of change. And, and then we start talking about the rate of change of the rate and how it, how it tells, what it tells us about the original accumulation function. Okay, so it's kind of an overview. And this, so this takes a lot of practice because when, when uh, we start asking lots and lots of questions, then it's easy to get confused. So really try to track one step at a time. Um, so we're going to let f be any function. So and I'm stressing any. So what type of function, if I'm saying f can be any function, what type of function could f be? The kinds of functions that we've been talking about in this class. Okay. I'm not talking about rules. I'm not saying square root of x or sine x. I'm saying in general. What's that? Uh, um, yeah, so, but just in general, what kind of functions have we been investigating? Wrong. Accumulation. accumulation function. So f could be an accumulation function. What other kind of function could it be? Uh, rate of a rate of change function, okay? So it doesn't matter whether it's an accumulation or rate. The, what we're going to talk about next, we'll have, this, we'll have the same conclusion, same outcomes, no matter what kind of function f is, okay? So, first one is, if the derivative of f, whether that's accumulation or rate, is greater than zero, can everyone think for themselves, then what can you conclude about the function f, whether that's an accumulation function or a rate function, if its derivative is greater than zero, which is another way to say that is it's positive, right? The, the derivative is positive. So think for yourself. It's the same thing as saying positive, right? Okay, so what can we say about f? Will, he wants increasing. Is that what you were thinking? Sam says yes. Nathan says yes. These guys over here, yeah. That's right, it's increasing, okay? f is increasing. If your derivative is positive, then your, whatever function you're talking about is an increasing function, okay? So here's, let's step back and say, how do you know that? So we've got a positive derivative no. So I'm not asking about a, I'm not asking a graph question, I'm asking a quantities question. So the quantities of x and the output of f, based on those quantities, how do you know that a positive derivative means an increasing function? Okay, so so you you're just basically um, uh, resolutely saying this. I mean, your explanation was just basically this: that if, if it's positive, then it's increasing. So we're saying, how do we know that? How do we know that? Okay, so we're getting closer. Yeah. So what was? Well. Okay, so but not not we're not talking about graph now. We're talking about the quantities, say x, and then the output. Yeah, Ben. Okay, so let me hold on a sec. So for a small delta x, that's what he's saying. As x gets greater. Okay. Delta y. Okay. And how do we know that? Because what is the change in y given a change in x? Um, it's going to be k delta x. It's k delta x. All right. K, it, because k is positive. What is k here? Well, how would I write k here? Um, dF dx. 
Okay, so the little change in y would be k times right. And so since so keep going. So since that's positive, what what about this? Say it again. What will also if be positive? The function moves from left to right, so delta x will also be positive. Therefore? The, um, delta y will be positive. That's right. So if this thing is positive, and then we do a small increase in delta x, that we know by our uh, rate of change that our change in y then will also be positive. And so change of y greater than 0 means what? As we go right, we go up. So that's how we know that that function is increasing. So it goes, again, it goes back to that very fundamental principle we've been talking about all semester. For a small change in x, your change in y will be the rate times change in x. And if that rate is positive, then that change in y will be positive. And so as you're going this way, you're going this way. You're accumulating positively. Okay, so, we, so what does increasing mean for an accumulation function? So if f was an accumulation function and we had a positive derivative, what does increasing mean? So now we're talking about the graph. What would the graph look like if you had an increasing accumulation function? What would that accumulation look like? How would you describe it? Kind of what I just explained. What does it mean if your accumulation function increases. How will that graph? Sam? It'd be upwards. Upwards, yeah. It goes up. It goes up. So, do we know if the accumulation function is negative or positive? No, this doesn't tell us if f is negative or positive. We know that the derivative is positive. What it does tell us is that it's going up. Increasing function. Okay, now suppose f is a rate of change function. So I'm emphasizing here, rate of change. So what does an increasing, so now say if f is rate of change, its derivative is positive, what, then, then that rate of change is increasing, right? That's what we're saying. So if f is rate of change and its derivative is positive, then the rate of change is increasing. What does an increasing rate of change mean for the accumulation function? What does increasing rate of change mean? So this is a little harder. This is what we want to understand. Really be confident about. Calvin. Um, well, this, it's kind of the same concept like first graph, but it's, it's increasing at a higher rate where it's like going upwards a lot higher. So delta y is a lot greater than delta x would be. OK. All right, so I think um, you're partially correct. Okay, it's accumulating faster and faster, so that's kind of what you were saying. So what I'm hearing you guys say is it's doing something like this. Is that right? So is, is the rate increasing there? Is the rate increasing? Yeah, because the slope is getting more positive. Is that the only way the rate could be increasing? Is there, an, is there another way the rate could be increasing? So how would it be increasing as it goes down? <coughs> so, okay, you're on the right track. I'm not sure which way you're thinking, though. Will? Um, well, the one that we have drawn right now is just it becoming more positive. What's it? So, so it? so it is a four-letter word today, okay? Because we've got lots of things we're keeping track of. So you can't start a sentence with it. Go. Okay. Um, well, since the rate of change here is in Rate of change is increasing. In that the function is becoming more positive. The rate, be, the rate is the becoming. The rate is becoming more positive. Okay. It could also be shown as the rate becoming less negative. Less which, negative. Which would be it just being slower in going downward, becoming closer to switching. To so what I saw you draw with your hand was this. Like that. Is that what you mean? Is the rate increasing here? Is that an increasing rate? 
Yes or no? Some are saying yes, some are saying no. Fight it out. Is it increasing rate or not? Nathan? Don't think so. Katie? I think so. Why? Because you're going from, like, no, um, you're going from negative to less negative. And the slopes are becoming, negative. slopes are less negative. Yes. So I'm trying to draw some slopes there. Slopes are becoming less negative. So is that less negative, is that increasing? Yeah. So over here the rate's increasing, and over here the rate's increasing. So does it tell us anything about the accumulation function increasing or decreasing, if the rate is increasing? No, because the, the accumulation function could be decreasing or it could be increasing. But if the rate is increasing, then the slopes are becoming, what, over here they're becoming less negative, over here they're becoming more positive. So for instance, the slopes could be negative 3, negative 1, negative a half, then 1 third, 1, 4. So I'm tracking the slopes there. And here, all through the way here, the slopes are increasing. Okay, and if the slopes are increasing, then what can we say about the rate of change function? Or the, sorry, the derivative of the rate of function, change function. Slopes are increasing, or the rate of change is increasing. What's the conclusion about the derivative of the rate? Jack? He wants positive. Yeah, that's where we started, right? That's, that's where we started. It's positive. Any questions? Okay, so we're going to... Okay? F, again, can be any function. It can be rate of change. could be accumulation. It could be, it could be the derivative of the rate of change. Okay? But it's just in itself, it's a function. So, if that derivative of F is less than zero, then what can we say about F? Kim, in the back. She wants decreasing. Agree? Is it? Okay. And F is decreasing. How do you know? So, either write something down or tell the person next to you, how do you know, <coughs> given that the rate is less than zero, how do you know that your, your function F is decreasing? So, write something or tell someone next to you. Go. It's coming from my computer. Oh, it went away. That's crazy. I must have some some browser window open that played an ad or something. Okay. How do you know? So, somebody knew. Let's see. Somebody knew. Jimin. Um, the small delta x, delta y would be negative. Okay, for small delta x. And how do you know it would be negative? That's right. So we know that for a small change in x, this change in y is the rate times the change in x. And if df dx, what is df dx in this case? Negative. So that product will be negative because our change in delta x is always positive. Therefore, delta y is negative. So what does decreasing mean for an accumulation function? So we're saying that it's decreasing because delta y is less than zero. So if f is an accumulation function, what will it look like? Jennifer, like what will the graph be? Going down. Right. That wasn't great. So if there's a little place where it's going up there, we don't want that.
going down. Okay. Now, suppose f is a rate of change function, and we're talking about the derivative of the rate being less than zero. So if the derivative of the rate is less than zero, then the rate is decreasing, right? So now, what does a decreasing rate of change function mean for its accumulation function? So what would it mean for the accumulation if the rate of change was decreasing? Somebody knew. Joe. So we're, we're saying that this is a rate function. So we know that the derivative of the rate is negative. And then we conclude that the rate of change is decreasing. What does that mean for the accumulation function? Okay. It's going to be also decreasing. The accumulation function will be yeah. decreasing. Yeah. Even faster and faster. Okay, faster and faster. So does the accumulation function is it necessarily decreasing? It could be increasing slower too. Right. Okay, so it could be increasing the, the accumulation could be <coughs> increasing and the rate doing what? Slowing down. Like getting <coughs> Okay, more negative. Uh, what is the rate here, though? Positive. positive. So the rate is getting smaller. less positive, smaller, right? Or more negative. So a decreasing rate or a derivative of the rate that's less than zero, the accumulation could be increasing or decreasing, but the rate is doing what? Always... Um, more negative, less positive, right. Okay, always, the rate is always decreasing here. Okay, any questions on the review? Okay, so I have a handout for you for practice. The handout looks just like this. Now we're going to kind of, by putting these in combination, we're practicing. <coughs> you just leave the blank ones in the back. So we're going to put these in combination now to really see if we get it, okay? And practice these ideas. So let's just do the first one, upper left together. So what does it mean? So, so what you're going to fill in here is regards the accumulation function, okay? So it's all about what the second derivative and first derivative tell us about the accumulation function. And so we're making conclusions, given information about first and second derivatives, we're making conclusions about the accumulation function in the blank boxes. Okay, so this first box right here. So Jerry, what does the first derivative being positive mean for the accumulation function? What does it mean? Increasing. Increasing. So what does that look like? What does the graph of the accumulation, what would it look like if it's increasing? Going up, okay? So we got two possibilities here. Can be going up like this, or we going up like this. Right? Both of, are both of those consistent with the first derivative being positive? Okay, so then the second derivative being positive. Saskia, what does that tell us about the accumulation function if the second derivative is positive? Or maybe I should ask, what does it tell us about the rate of change? Is it positive? The second derivative is positive. So what does that tell us about the rate of change? Cool? So what we're saying, by, the, by saying the second derivative is positive, we're really saying that the derivative of the rate is positive. So when the derivative of a function is positive, what can we say about that function? Does that mean the rate of change is positive also? Utah. 
rate of change is increasing. This would mean that the rate is increasing. So now we've got two possibilities from before for the function increase. This says the function increases, the accumulation increases. For which one of these two does the rate of change increase? Patrick, first or second? Second. Second one. Here the rate of change is becoming what? More positive, right? More positive. The rate of change is bending upwards because the rate is increasing. So that this is not doesn't match the information, but this does. So our accumulation, if you knew these two things, the accumulation function would have to look like that. Does that make sense? Okay, so now let me, let me uh, make some qualifiers before I set you loose here. This um, second derivative equals zero. If you had a linear function, your second derivative would always equal zero, right? Okay, that's not what this is about. All of these are in the context of curved functions, okay? So function, accumulation functions that are always curving, going up and down and up and down, okay? So none of these answers will be because of a linear function. That's, that goes without saying, okay? It goes without saying. So we're really um, thinking about these terms of the second derivative is positive at a particular x value, or the second, second derivative is zero at a particular x value, okay? Same with first derivative. We're not, we're not talking about a constant function there. It goes without saying. A constant function has a first derivative of zero. We're talking about functions like this. And so then we're thinking about the first derivative being zero at a particular x value. OK? Does it make sense? So you can work together, and you're just, what can you infer about the accumulation function? What will the graph look like, given the information? Go. about the rate. The rate is doing more. I thought increasing. Increasing. So I'm going through the rate increasing. The rate is increasing. Here. So this is still so second driven constant. So is the is the rate increasing? Oh, it's getting smaller. So this should be this. See this 
Well, the problem is the second group is possible. Oh, let's see. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Four lines. It's like no, it's a four lines. 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 Yeah. Four lines. Negative 
So maybe the rate of change there is what? Negative 5. Okay. What's the rate of change here then? Negative 2. Okay. What's the rate of change here? Negative a half. Okay. What's the rate of change here? Something positive. One half. What's the rate of change here? So this sequence of values, these rates, do you see that they're increasing? Because they're becoming less negative or more positive. So all of this, that whole graph, is a positive second derivative. So now we also need the first derivative to be 0. That what? No change in the accumulation. What about here? Is there a change in the accumulation here? Oh, yes, this is the accumulation function. Is it decreasing or increasing? The accumulation. I'm asking, here's the accumulation function. At this point right here, is the accumulation increasing or decreasing? Decreasing. What about here? What about here? What about here? Is there any place on this graph where the accumulation neither increases nor decreases. That's right. Is the accumulation increasing or decreasing right there? Right. Zero. Make sense? What about the rate? What's the rate doing right there? The rate. Increasing. Why? Because it's going from negative to positive. So it's increasing. But the accumulation is still. It's not going up or down. But the slope is going up. Does it help? That's what we need to that's exactly what we need to get good at. We could do what? The rate could be less negative or more positive. We're talking about the slopes here, right? The rate of change. So the second derivative to be positive means the rate is increasing. This whole thing, the rate is increasing. Now, is there any place here where the first derivative is zero? The accumulation doesn't increase or decrease. It stays the same. What about here? What's the accumulation doing? Decreasing. What's the accumulation doing here? What? Increasing. So is there any place where it doesn't decrease or increase? It stays about the same. <laughs> For one moment, right? But what is the rate doing through there? Increasing. It's going from negative to positive. The slopes are increasing through there. So we, that's what's going on. 
are the easiest. Hopefully we got the corners. Is the accumulation increasing or decreasing here? The accumulation. Increasing. The first derivative is positive. So in general this graph will do what? Go up. Now, how will it go up? Second derivative is negative, which means the rate is the rate is decreasing. So it needs to be going up, accumulation increasing, rate decreasing, which looks like draw it with your finger. Yep. Okay, accumulation is doing what here? Accumulation. Decreasing, so in general the graph will be going down, going from here to here somehow. So second derivative positive means that the rate is increasing. So how can it, how can the function decrease and the rate increase? Jeff's doing this. You guys agree with Jeff? Right, because the rate's becoming less negative. Okay, last one. <coughs> Accumulation goes down or up? Down, the rate decreases. Draw it with your finger. So those, that, I mean, that's our starting point. We've got to have those four right. Got to understand those four, why that those are the way they are. Any questions? Okay, so here I'm making an illustration. What am I... There. So what am I illustrating with this picture right here? Nick? Um, what am I showing? Where the first derivative will be zero at that, the bottom point where it stops changing for a second. What stops changing? The rate. The rate stops changing right there. Agree with that? The rate stops changing. Accumulation stops changing. So which one is it, Nick? Accumulation stops changing, and is that consistent with the information? Which piece of information is that? First derivative equals zero. It means accumulation neither increases nor decreases. 
stays constant for a second. All right. So is keep going, Nick. What else am I showing here? Um, the rate is still changing uh, positively. Right. Because it's becoming less negative and then more positive. So all through here, what does the rate of change do? Even at the bottom, increases the whole way because it's this this picture up here. The rates are becoming less negative, more positive, which is all increasing, right? And that's what we wanted. We wanted the derivative of the rate to be positive. So that means the rate is always increasing. So does this point satisfy this information? Why not? So in the first derivative is what here? Yeah, this point belongs here. Do you see? Both, or sorry, second derivative is positive, but the first derivative is negative. Where does this point belong? Both derivatives positive. Only this point on this graph meets these conditions. Okay, so second derivative negative, first derivative zero. Dalton? Flipped. So can you explain it to me? Which point will it be zero? Oh, wait a second. So not the accumulation is not necessarily zero. Yeah, the derivative. So it's where the accumulation, the change in the accumulation is zero. Okay? What else? Rate is always decreasing. Less positive, more negative. Okay? This here violates which? Top or left? Left. It, it would belong up here. And this violates also left. It, that point would belong down here. Okay, so now we want the first derivative to be positive. What does it mean? John, we're going we're to try this middle column. Middle column's the hardest. First derivative positive, what does it mean? Does it tell us about, what does it tell us about? The accumulation is going up. So, so this is going to be going up, right? And then what does this mean? Second derivative equals to zero. Roman? That the rate of change is neither positive nor negative. The rate, the rate of, of change. change second, second derivative. So what does that mean if it's zero? It's so the rate is neither... Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so the rate is neither decreasing nor increasing. So how can we have that so that we're going up, the accumulation's increasing, but the rate is neither increasing nor decreasing? How is that possible? So maybe let's take a look over here. Where is it going up? Maybe around, from here to here it goes up, right? Is there a place where the rate neither increases or decreases along from here to here. So what about here? Is the rate, what's the rate doing here? Increasing. What's the rate doing here? The rate's decreasing. So is there a point? What's the rate right there doing? The rate for a moment doesn't increase or decrease. Do you see that? Because it's changing from increasing to decreasing. The rate is changing from increasing to decreasing. So for a moment, the rate doesn't change. But the rate itself is positive. The accumulation's going up. Oh, did I, did I get that right? Yeah. Another way to do that is this way. Same thing. Now here the rate's going from decreasing to increasing. So for a moment the rate doesn't change. 
second derivative is 0. What about this? Does that meet it? Last of you had that graph. Does that have a second derivative of 0 and a first derivative being positive right there? Yes or no? Connor, why not? Yeah, so first derivative is zero there. What about the second derivative? Zero. Also zero. So it belongs here. Do you see the difference? So we also go on the way down doing that. Okay, so now now that we've done those two, how about this one? You do this, take a, like 30 seconds, see if you can come up with this one. What do we want? We want the function to be doing what? The accumulation to be decreasing, and the rate to be doing what? Not changing. How is that possible? See if you can draw it. Someone new. Isabel, you're up. Okay, so for this one, because the first one was negative, you know it's going to be going down. Going down. And the second one is zero. It's going to be like this. Okay, so at first, is the rate decreasing or increasing as it goes down? Yeah, but so what is the rate doing, though? The rate increasing or decreasing there? Less. Less negative. So the rate is? How is the rate changing? That's right. And then we need it to change the rate changing from increasing to decreasing. And so there's, I'm trying to try that middle part again. There we go. So here the rate's increasing. And then for a moment, the rate is doing what? Not changing. And then the rate is decreasing, becoming more negative. So right there, the rate doesn't change, but what about the accumulation? Decreasing, and that's what we wanted. We want the first derivative to be negative. Okay, so really quick, I want you to, we're going to go back to this middle square, okay? Look at, take the accumulation function x to the fourth. I want you to find the first and second derivatives at 0. So f prime, f double prime at 0. So find the derivative and then plug in 0. Chrissy, what's the derivative of x to the 4? 4x to the third, and so at 0, what's the value? 0. And now the second derivative is going to equal, if the first derivative is 4x cubed, what's the second derivative? Kim, 12x squared, and what's that at 0? Zero? 0. So which box would this fit in of the nine boxes? The middle, right? It's Alice, right? It's the middle box, Alice, pretty much. Okay, so what does x to the fourth look like? x to the fourth looks like this. So right there at zero, both 
first and second derivative is 0. Negative x to the fourth looks like this. Or say negative x to the sixth. Both derivatives equal 0. So if you're given this, these two pieces of information, that both derivatives are 0, what can you conclude about the accumulation? Tell me, Ashlyn, you're making the right face. What can you conclude? Mm -hmm. We've got, look at all four cases here. Will? What's that? No, um, but it might be true for a non-polynomial. Okay, so I'm not, I'm not asking about the polynomial. Um, what I'm showing you, though, is there's all these different ways that you can have both the first derivatives equal zero. It could be increasing, decreasing, or, or it flattens out is really the only thing we know, that it flattens out. So you really can't conclude anything when you have both, because you have all these different cases of things that could happen. Okay, so the other eight are good. The other eight, we can make these conclusions, but the middle box, given that both are zero, there's, there's, lot, there's many possibilities. We can't really make a conclusion, except that it's leveling out at that moment, which is just saying this. Okay, you got your recitation today? You have a quiz? It's on the very things I told you Wednesday. So have a good weekend. A couple of us who came into class and we talked about the homework and uh, we didn't know that the bottom line of the homework that like was referring to a textbook, like problems in the textbook, a lot of us just thought it was like a reference okay. to the textbook. I don't know. I, it just I didn't get one email. Oh, well, no, we, just, sec, figured, we just figured it out now. That's why. Oh, are you talking about the homework? Yeah. Yeah, the, the, at the bottom of the homework there's a little thing that said to do the stuff in the book. We got